About a year ago, when I reviewed the Panther Audio Aura DX4, they came in this case. That was it. There was no box, there was nothing. It just came like that, still in there. And while, it, while that's fine, it, it kind of lacks a little bit of that first impression magic. Well, I'm glad to say, boy, things have changed around here. Check this out. We go from nothing to this beast of a box. Man, that is nice. That is classy. Like that is that gives you a first impression. Love that. And I love being in a unique position, you know, where I can see brands maturing from this to this. Now, I'm not going to show you all the stuff that's inside. There is a very good accessory bundle included, but I won't go into that. I will show you it comes with this uh, nice case, felt lined case, and you get a nice selection of ear tips, which are in this awesome handy little holder here. I like that a lot. But uh, let's get onto the earphones now, because that's why we're here, right? Check these out, aren't they gorgeous? You've got this dark, smoky, translucent resin, imported German resin shells. And they've got this sort of honeycomb colored gold flake scattered within. And they're just beautiful. I can't even see the seam anywhere. It's just like one universal piece. They've got a, a dual bore nozzle. And there's a little lip on there to hold ear tips firmly in place. The 0.78 millimeter standard two pin connector there. It sits flush with the surface. And there's, oh, there's two switches on the back here. Yes, we have another IEM with tuning switches and the single vent there. But man, these are such a pretty IEM. They are really, really gorgeous. I like that a lot. In terms of comfort, these are fantastic. They're really good. They are a little bit wide, as you can see there, so they might stick out of your ears a little bit that way. But apart from that, the uh, comfort is really, really good. And also the sound or the, the noise isolation is very good as well. You could, you could actually use these for live performance if you're a musician, because the noise isolation is pretty solid. Now the price of the D2X here is about 255 US dollars. So that puts it um, a little bit just above the BGVP VG4 and a bit below the Shanling ME500 Platinum here. Let's move on to the sound and I'll start up with um, a brief summary. The D2X here has a, it's on the warmer side of neutral. It's a kind of a warm musical IEM. It doesn't have a lot of treble energy or much treble uh, presence up top. It's more of a kind of a laid back, very smooth presentation, but at the same time, the overall resolution is good. And surprisingly, the detail re uh, retrieval is still pretty good on these. Now I'll break it down as well, starting with the bass as always. and. In, in the default tuning mode, the bass isn't huge. It is boosted. It's still got a healthy, fairly meaty low end, but it's not huge. In terms of speed, the bass is pretty good. It's got a nice clean leading edge, a fairly fast decay, but it's a nice meaty bass with good impact and uh, a, a nice bit of weight behind it. Now, uh, in the game mode, which is the uh, switch one in the on position. That gets that's a pretty significant bass boost, and, and uh, they do get pretty thumpy if you do that. So if you're a bass head, yeah, you'd probably be satisfied with these because uh, they they do get up there. But anyway, back to the default mode. The bass is pretty good. It doesn't bleed too much over into the mid range, but uh, the overall tonality sort of lends a warmth from that bass it carries throughout the entire signature. Now onto the mid-range, and the mid-range is actually fairly neutral in tone and note size, 
although it does carry warmth over from the base, of course. The clarity is quite good. It's not an ultra clear mid-range, but it is quite good. Vocals have good articulation. The, over, the, the resolution in the mid-range is nice, like uh, the instrument separation is very good. There's no sort of blurring uh, or mushing up together of the sounds. And vocals are slightly softened, but still quite detailed. And overall, I find it quite a pleasing mid-range. The, the tone is quite natural. It sounds fairly accurate in terms of tonality, but it's not one of those ultra clear uh, ultra fast light sort of mid ranges. It does have that underlying warmth to it as well. And then we get onto the treble, and the treble is a bit laid back, regardless of uh, which tuning mode you put the switches in. The treble is pretty smooth. Uh, there, there's a one peak in the lower treble or the core treble at about eight kilohertz, and after that it rolls off fairly quickly. So you don't get much uh, sparkle in the upper end, then you don't get any sort of brightness or, or sharpness. It's not a real precise treble. It's one that's tuned more for easygoing, relaxing, non-fatiguing kind of sound. But it does supply enough clarity to the mid-range and like I mentioned, pretty good detail retrieval as well. So who do I actually think the D2X would be for? Well, as I mentioned, I think bass heads would get a thrill out of the D2X. Uh, especially with the switches in the right positions, you do get a really nice meaty low end. Um, you get some nice sub bass rumble going on and it can really punch with some impact. And although the treble is nice and detailed, I would say for the treble heads out there, this is probably not the IEM for you. Regardless of the switch positions, the treble is just not that forward. It's not that energetic. So if you really want that expressive high end with that uh, really sort of precise crisp treble, you won't find that here. But what you do get is a very musical, a warm, inviting sound that has good resolution and good detail retrieval. And overall, I really enjoy it. I think this is a good IEM. So let's do a couple of quick comparisons now and I'll start with the BGVP VG4. And listening to these side by side, man, the VG4 sounds really bright very ultra clean, um, loaded with clarity and a high, more forward treble, more energetic treble. It's a brighter sound, a cleaner sound, not necessarily as natural as the D2X. It's, it's a little bit more exciting and dynamic, but at the same time, the sound can get quite fatiguing. It, it gets a little, bit, a little bit hot, a little bit bright. So it is kind of thrilling in terms of sound, but it is a bright sound. These have switches too, by the way. They've got three switches, which makes uh, choosing your favorite even more confusing. But um, if I had to choose, I would choose the D2X over that. And here we've got the Shanling ME500 Platinum. Now this one has been on my favorite list for a long time, and it's surprising actually, because the, the top end, the high end, the treble, can get a little bit hot on occasion, and I usually shy away from that pretty vigorously. But for some reason, I dig these. They've got enough uh, weight in the bass to sort of counterbalance that. But what I really dig is the detail retrieval. These have insane detail retrieval, really, really good micro details. You'll pick them up here. But like I said, they do get a bit hot. Uh, the overall tonality is warmer, again, on the on the D2X, it's a bit leaner here with the ME500 Platinum. The sub bass has a little bit of a roll off here, whereas the sub bass on this is fairly linear, linear with the mid bass, so you do get that really full bodied low end. So let's sum it up guys. Um, warm, musical IEM, beautiful, beautiful shells, $255. I think if you are averse to brighter sounds, like if you prefer warmer and more musical sounds. These are a really good IEM, they are good value. Although they don't have that sort of really high precision in the treble, they do perform technically well in terms of resolution, detail retrieval, instrument separation. Uh, sound stage is pretty good. It's not a big sound stage, but it is a stable stage 
and um, it's not the widest, but the sense of depth is quite good. Pretty good layering throughout, but overall, it's a good IEM, and yes, I would recommend these. Before we wrap this up, don't forget there is a link to the full written review in the description down below. There is also links to my social media channels. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. And uh, yeah, that about sums it up, guys. So if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, Parfam audio file style. If you're new to the channel and you wanna see more reviews like this in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And until next time, I'll see you later.